Hello everyone, welcome to another live hangout here at Voice Essentials number two for 2022. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it is so good to be hanging out with you this morning. Well, sorry, this morning, actually it's, it's, it's afternoon for me. I don't know why I said this morning and it's evening for so many of you because so many of you are in the Northern Hemisphere and, and I expect that there are less people in the live chat today. In fact, I think there probably are because as we go to air right now live, the Super Bowl is playing out currently. Um, am I right in, in thinking it's between the Cincinnati somethings, bang, 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 bangles, and the, <laughs> and the L LA Bulls or Rams? Rams, is that right? Um, Mackenzie, I can see you in the chat. You're going to have to let, help me out here. This is, I'm a, I'm a poor Aussie. I'm into sports. I love my sports. But NFL is not a big thing here in Australia. It's, it's, it's interesting. I think it's, it's fascinating. But I don't know a lot about it, to be honest. Um, I follow other, other leagues of, of ball sports. Anyway, so let, let me know. <laughs> let me know how accurately I was. Last time I looked, in fact, I watched a little bit of it. It is being telecast here in Australia. I was watching it. It was 2016 or 1620. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I suspect it'll be over sometime during the show. Um, and uh, I hope your team wins, I guess. Um, anyway, enough about the Super Bowl. Um, oh, I tell you what I would be interested in. What I didn't catch was the halftime show. I know the entertainment is second to none. I know it's a big deal. So why don't you in the chat let us know if you caught the uh, the halftime entertainment? Let me know how it went. Um, keen to find out from you. Uh, good to see um, many of our regulars. Uh, we've got I can see Kelly's just jumped in. Mackenzie, who did apologise, saying she was going to be watching the Super Bowl. She may have, she may be able to join us. Uh, Linda, of course. Hello, I haven't said hello to, to Karen from Singwise for a little while. Hello, Karen. Nice to have you joining us. Um, and uh, so um, Mackenzie's saying, in honor of the Super Bowl, any tips on singing the U.S. National Anthem? <laughs> Does that suggest, Mackenzie, that it didn't go great in, in, in the Super Bowl today? Again, I didn't catch it. I, I don't know. I know that there's been some controversy over the singing of the American national anthem um, at the Super Bowl in the past, and uh, and do you know what? A little secret. I'll let you in on a little secret. I do have plans one day to do a video of me singing the American national anthem just here in the studio. Nothing, nothing overly fancy, um, and uh, just calling it <laughs> calling it an, an Aussie sings. The, the American National Anthem. That I think that might get a, a few laughs, if nothing else. Simply because um, my understanding is the, the American National Anthem is not an easy anthem to really nail. So there you go. Uh, so good to be hanging out with you today. We're going to be doing a QA. and a um, And uh, so if you've got questions, uh, given that there are fewer people in the live chat, today is your day to get your question answered. Of course, we do them um, in the in the order, Linda is taking them down. We do them in the order that they are being um, that you're listing them in the live chat, and uh, and of course, if you want your uh, your question answered and you you're desperate to have it answered, then put it in a super chat because we prioritise super chat. So the moment a super chat comes in, we answer that as the first next cab off the rank. And uh, and keen to answer your questions today to the best of my ability, as I as I always say here on the channel, um, I do not know everything there is to know about voice. Um, I know I know more than some and less than others. Let's put it that way. And so, if it is within my powers on a knowledge basis to answer your question, I will do my best to do so. And uh, we do that every. Monday at 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, and uh, it's it's I I look forward to these hangouts. I really really do, and uh, and I hope you do too. So many of you join me every week. Some some most of you are joining me on your Sunday night. You finish your weekend, 
<laughs> by listening to me rabbit on as well as our special guests um, I've already got our guests between now and Easter lined up I'm super excited you know we we mostly have girls ladies not girls ladies women join us because the singing teaching world is predominantly women I'm <laughs> Um, we're, we're a rare breed, us male singing teachers, in the world of singing teaching. Um, uh, but I am pleased to say that every single uh, person that I have lined up between now and Easter is male. Most of our guests have been female, but over the next few weeks, uh, we're going to be having male singing teachers, all of them excellent pedagogues from the US, from here in I've got a friend, my one of my closest colleagues, Jeffrey Ashenden, is going to be joining us uh, in a few months and a couple of months' time, hopefully late March. And um, and I can't wait to introduce you to to Jeff. You know, some people are, are just wonderful human beings. Jeffrey is is one of those. <laughs> And uh, not only is, a, is he a wonderful human being, he is an outstanding uh, pedagogue, uh, working mostly in classical and music theatre voice, but he, on top of that, is an outstanding piano player. And so I'm really looking forward to, to hosting uh, Jeff on the show in a few weeks' time. Hey, before we get into the Q&A, I just want to remind you about the dates coming up. We've got some date claimers that you need to be aware of. Uh, in uh, for the release of Dr. Dan's Singer's Starting Guide, my brand new online course. Now, it doesn't go live until April. Um, and, uh, and even last week, and, and I'll finish, I will finish editing the videos, hopefully by Thursday, I'm expecting. And can I, I, I am super excited to bring this content to you. There is so much. You know, one thing, one little thing that I pride myself on is bringing you university level information. So, this is research based, evidence based, uh, you know, supported in academic, a academic level um, uh, information, but bringing it to you in an accessible uh, way that is easy to understand applicable to your voice, but not only that, <laughs> it's a darn sight cheaper than doing a university degree. And that there's nothing wrong with doing university degrees. You don't get a doctorate um, without doing a university degree. But, you know, it's that's not the path that everyone's on. So I love to bring you that level of information. And, and I am proud to say that you know, that level of information is being, I am ramming, stuffing that so much information into the live, uh, the, the Dr. Dan's Singer's Starting Guide. Now, it goes live, pretty sure it'll go live for the 4th of April, being very specific. It'll go live in April. But I am going to be running, now it, it's going to cost you know, from the 4th of April onwards, it's going to cost 197 Australian dollars, which is around about 150 US, uh, depending on conversion rates. But I will be releasing it as a pre-launch 50% special, one week only, the 7th of March, the 7th till the 13th of March. And so it'll be 97 Australian dollars, which is around about 75 US dollars for one week only uh, during the 7th to the 13th of, of March. So put that in your put that in your notebooks because it won't you know be readily on a special again. Moment we, we launch in, in April, it will be the, the, the 197. So I want you, I want you as my as my voice essentials committed family, I want you to be able to get a hold of this course uh, um, you know at the cheaper price. Now the question has been asked, in fact I think from memory it was it was our good Kelly who asked. Uh, Kelly uh, asked is this for, for beginner singers only? You know, if you've already been working your way through Voice Essentials 1, 2, and 3 online courses, is it appropriate to go and 
you know, go back and do the singer's starting guide? The answer to that is absolutely, categorically, definitely yes. There, I, keep, <laughs> I keep bumping my head on this new mic. It's going to take me a little bit of getting used to. It absolutely is for every singer. We are going to be looking at what is singing, developing your philosophical understanding. Why are you singing? Ask yourself that question. And, and I walk you through that. But then we get into modules two and module three. So module one, module two, we're going into vocal anatomy. I want you to really understand the, 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 the anatomy of your voice. I want you to understand all the muscles and, and how it all works. And it, understanding vocal anatomy empowers you to be able to manage and operate your voice so much better. And then once we've done that in module three, and that's that the, there is a half an hour, 30 minute webinar based, um, uh, video that I've put together. There's another 30 minute webinar instructional video in module two, where we look at voice care and we really deep dive into that. What, how do we look after the voice? What can go wrong with the voice? What are some of the medical issues that we can face on a functional level, on a pathology level? I deep dive into all of that with you. And, and these are things that all empower, no matter where you are on the, on the journey, these will empower you. Now, the reason I've called it the, the Dr. Dan Singer's starting guide is because ultimately I want everyone to have this information from the, from the very outset of their vocal development journey. Uh, these are the things I wish I had have known when I first started learning to sing. I wish there had have been a course where they kind of said, okay, you want to be a singer, you want to develop your voice, um, your, your vocal craft, do this course first, and then we'll start doing some singing. This is a, a practical information course that is going to better you vocally. So please don't miss out on the, the super special, the 50% off, uh, as I said, one week only, which is basically in around about three weeks. And so if you're on the, um, the Dejarts, um, or the voice essentials, um, mailing, um, you know, if you, if you get mail outs and, uh, to your inbox, then I will be sending out reminder emails, letting you know when the special happens, but just a heads up, don't miss out. Don't please don't miss out. Make sure you've got the, that little bit of dollar set aside so that you can do this course. Cause I, I, I tell you, I, I am. Can you tell I'm a little excited? I'm, I'm a little excited. Okay, let's get into to doing some questions, shall we? Because ultimately, I think that's why you're all here. And I'm keen to answer your questions right after this. Okay, so I guess we should start at the beginning, which is always a good way to start. Um, and dra Dragon Music, dra Dragon Music, um, I would like to know how to sing from the diaphragm effectively. Um, Dragon, I do have a whole video on this very subject. And this is where, you know, the very thing about, I was just talking about, you know, understanding your anatomy is so important. Where are all the bits? You know, where are all the, the, the bits that you use? Your diaphragm is actually um, something, it's an automated muscle and it sits much higher than most people realize. It sits way up here. And as you breathe in, it contracts downwards. And as you breathe out, it has what's referred to as a passive recall and it returns to its point of rest. When most people talk about singing from their diaphragm, well, firstly, there is a misnomer in that, in that vernacular. And that is when you, when you sing, your air is being expelled through the vocal tract, you know, via the larynx. But during that expulsion of air, your diaphragm is passive in its recoil. It's inactive, kind of, but it's certainly not active like it is when you are breathing in. And so in fact, we can't 
sing from our diaphragm because the diaphragm has been in one sense deactivated as you sing out so generally it's just simply a mislabeling and so our our diaphragm when we talk about our diaphragm what most people are referring to is their abdominal wall the rectus abdominis straight down their front and their obliques and their transverse abdominis abdominal muscles that run across their belly that way and so it is important to develop your breath management and that actually is probably a better way to talk about your breathing for singing not to talk about it as you know i want to learn to sing to to, to sing from my diaphragm because it's actually really poor language it's really um shows a, a lack of understanding about how all the bits work and so when we talk about breath management what we are learning to do is to to develop um a, a, a system where we're able to manage the flow of air using the uh, interplaying uh, uh, across the motion of the diaphragm as it descends and the way we activate and use our abdominal wall our obliques to then manage the outflow of air which also has that passive recall of the diaphragm and then how we manage the pressure the pressure is the big thing and the consistency of that pressure flow through the larynx there are no shortcuts here the only way to develop your breath and i know you will find people online who will say just set and forget you don't need to worry about your air it'll take care of itself i do not subscribe to that approach i am yet and i've been doing this for 27 years i am yet to meet a singer who has not been advantaged by developing their breath management strategies and where their voice their their capacity to manage their voice has not been improved with intentional um working on that process um and you know if if we could just rely on the natural voice well i i probably wouldn't have a job we'd all be we'd all be great um and and everything would be hunky-dory but you know i don't i don't you know work with a, a lot of people who can claim to to be a natural singer and in fact that's all they you know will ever be and want to be because they're already beyonce you there are the exceptions to the rule beyonce may even be one of them there are exceptions to the rule but the majority of us are the rule not the exception and uh our ego sometimes doesn't like to hear that but i can tell you i am the rule i am not the exception and just like you i've had to develop these strategies around my breath management rishik bad bad wash i always give it a shot what foods can help in clearing mucus while singing what what it's we're almost putting the cart before the horse with that question you know what what foods can help in clearing mucus i'd first of all want to talk about what's creating the mucus in the first place because i'd rather prevention over cure and i i kind of figure if i'm if i'm sort of trying to eat something to clear away the mucus why not just try to produce less mucus there are three things that will produce heightened levels of mucus um, within the vocal tract first one is dehydration if you are not hydrated enough your mucosal layer the viscosity of your mucosal layer, layer can thicken up and that gives you that gluggy kind of sensation of feeling like you're it's just not as free and as as viscous as it, as it needs to and so upping your hydration levels is so important i was talking with a student this morning uh, and, and we're talking about the importance of your hydration. So important. Number one. Oh, and if you want to know how, how much water, it, just aim to get the eight to 10, 10 cups of water. So it's around about two to three liters of water a day. Um, you'll need to do a con jump on Google and do a conversion for the, the two to three liter thing if you're doing it in gallons. That's the first one. The second one that I want you to look at, think about is allergies 
Uh, do you have any allergy-based response where you're creating a post-nasal drip and therefore you constantly feel like you're clearing gunk away and mucus away? Um, dealing with your allergies first and foremost is so important. I was sharing last, uh, actually I wasn't sharing, yeah, I was sharing last week, but not on to my show, on to uh, uh, Philippe Hall's um, yeah, YouTube. And thank you so many for so many of you jumped over and watched that show with Philippe. Um, and, uh, and that was with uh, his channel called Singing Revealed. You might go and check it out after today's uh, show. And I was sharing how, you know, um, I have a, I have a, let's see if I can show it over here. Where am I going here? If I go to that, can you see, can you see there, I've, sorry, I've got, <laughs> I'm doing some recording later. You can see I've got mics set up and everything, but I see the white thing over there in the corner. That's an air purifier. Now an air purifier is, um, it, what it does is it, it purifies the air. It removes dust and allergens from the air. And I can tell you, I've got one here and I've got one in my bedroom for while I sleep. These have radically transformed my life. I, I so wish I had of, no, no, I've only had them for two years. I so wish I had have had them when I was gigging professionally. It would have transformed my world because what I have learned in the last three or four years is I have really bad allergies. And you go, well, how did you not know that until, you know, your mid forties, Daniel? Well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've, I've, for, for, years, for decades, I've been telling people, oh, think about your allergies. You know, sometimes we don't then apply it to ourselves. And anyway, when I got these air purifiers, world changed. Uh, literally, literally overnight. Now, what I used to be having to work with was just drowning in my own gunk. Really disgusting. So that's the second thing. Deal with allergies if, if, um, if you need to. The third thing that you may find um, is causing mucus is reflux. And so because we, if we are sufferers of reflux, particularly LPR, laryngeal pharyngeal reflux, uh, otherwise known as silent reflux or singer's reflux, these are all synonymous terms, um, interchangeable, uh, then you'll find that if you're suffering from that, then the response, the protective response that your body will have to that reflux is to try and coat everything and produce more mucus, more gunk, and, and to, to try and, you know, protect the mucosa and the, 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 the retinoids and all that sort of stuff at the back of the throat. They're the three main contributors to, re, to, to mucus development. Um, and, and so I would be encouraging you first and foremost to look at that. Now, then what foods can help in clearing mucus, well, then you want to go looking at um, really uh, foods like um, really high water content foods, foods that are going to help to cleanse the vocal tract. But again, we just come back to water. If you're well hydrated um, and, and drinking regularly, you are going to find that really beneficial. Shanti um, Tapa, how can I recover after a bad cold? How can I make my voice sound nice? Is it good to sing loud? So there's a few questions going on there. Let's answer the first one. How do I recover uh, after a bad cold? You recover by resting the voice. I, I cannot rest. Vocal rest is such an underrated aspect of a singer's life. You must give the voice time to recover after heavier vocal loads, um, uh, as well as after your voice has been, you know, after you've been sick with it, with the general cold and with, um, Omicron and, and COVID, you know, going around at the moment. So important. Um, a number of my students have had Omicron and, um, have re really expressed this, this really deep seated cough that they've had as a result of that. 
And so all of that is quite laborsome on the vo on the voice and the vocal tract. And so you you really want to rest. It's the one thing us singers don't like to do is to be quiet. But at times of sickness, it is it is what the doctor would prescribe is just reduce your vocal load down to its absolute bare minimum. Don't whisper. Don't replace your phonatory activity, your, your speaking and your singing. Don't whisper, but just reduce the quantity of your, of your speaking um, and where possible, don't sing. Now, um, what you can do with the cold is um, obviously you want to target the cold and make sure that gets better. Now, if within two weeks, you, you, let's say you've, you've, you feel like you've, you've, you're back, you're fully repaired, and this is not in response to COVID. COVID can take, they, they're, I'm hearing four to six weeks for you to really feel like you're, you're, you're much better. But I'm talking about your general flu. Isn't it amazing we're in the age where I have to differentiate between <laughs> your common cold and, and COVID? But with your common cold, once you're, once you're better you, and you wake up one morning and you go, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm back. If your voice is still struggling and it still continues to struggle for up to two weeks afterwards, that's probably the, the time where you go, mm, we might want to go and get that checked by a laryngologist. Go and get it looked at um, by a laryngologist just to make sure everything's okay. It's not to say that after two weeks, if things haven't repaired, that there's something dire going on. But that's probably the, the point at which I'd want to be saying, might want to go and get that looked at. Uh, and uh, particularly for those who are who are working with their voice. Um, I've just seen a, 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 a super chat come in from Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly's always so good with the super chats and, and all those super chat dollars. They go back into the channel. I was sharing last week. We've got this new mic as a part of the show, um, and uh, and it's it's not cheap. And do you know what? I went and I, I really want this to be. You know, I, I want the show to be as good a quality as it possibly can. And uh, and so I've even gone out and bought a, another piece of another two pieces of equipment, a compressor and preamp that are going to be just make it schmick because i want you guys to have the best show that you can so thank you kelly all of those dollars go back into the gear like this uh kelly's asking hoping you can answer matt regan's question about here and you always do that too kelly you what a what a wonderful person okay let me come to let me come to matt's question on behalf of kelly who's given us a uh, a super chat Thank you, Kelly. You you always pay it forward. Matt has asked, great to be here on the live feed. Would be great to hear your thoughts around what could assist singers who have hearing damage and are experiencing difficulties at times in being in tune. Uh, it is a challenge. And I, I so wish, you know, there were there were there was a magic wand that we could wave and and solve hearing impairment hearing impairment um obviously i'm proud to be an aussie to say you know the the bionic ear is an australian invention and uh and they create wonderful things for for so many people but when it comes to singing and singing in tune it is important there is a definite of course, relation, relationship between what we hear and and our ability to then pitch in keeping with the accompaniment or the 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 pitch, uh, the center pitch that we're that we're working towards. Um, in fact, there's there's a really fascinating um, and it would be on YouTube. You could look it up. Uh, fascinating video of a lady. I think she was doing um, America's Got Talent. I think it was America's Got Talent, one of those TV talent shows. And this young lady, um, she uh, was um, clinically deaf, but had 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 gone deaf in her um, senior schooling years, 
Um, and so she hadn't been born deaf, but she certainly was clinically deaf, and but she was able to develop her kinesthesia, her physical awareness once once her hearing impairment impairment, um, you know, um, sadly came to be. She then went about developing her capacity to feel the pitch. Amazing, amazing story. Can I encourage you to go and search that up on YouTube? Um, and uh, and it's 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 quite extraordinary. Now, can we all learn to do that? Um, I dare say, for people who are are born deaf, um, possibly not. However, um, I wouldn't want to say definitely not because the moment you say that, someone someone goes and does it, which would be wonderful, which would be amazing. Uh, but learning to see frequencies resonate um, within a space, and every frequency resonates at a different. I don't know what the science, the physics of it is, but every frequency is resonating differently. So if I sing an A440, 440 cycles per second, then that is going to resonate in a space very differently to if I sing just an octave lower at 220 hertz. And so learning to feel that, and the, I do think, I'm a great believer in, you know, we need to develop our kinesthetic awareness, absolutely need to do that because we need to manage our, our body. But I, my observation is students who do um, develop their kinesthesia, their, their physical awareness of their voice, their pitch also improves because their whole body becomes in sync with their voice. Um, and and the tuning um, improves significantly. And so there are no easy things to tell you. You can try working with in-ear monitors, perhaps bringing the, the audio so that it sits far closer um, and you're able to experience the audio and, and whatever pitch orientation you are requiring, whether it be... Uh, 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 a guitar or a piano or a backing track, having it sit closer and, and in-ear monitoring will, will help with that so that you're not fighting for over background noise and, and your brain isn't having to do computational work to extract um, the distracting noise to zone in on, on the pitch centers that you're aiming for. That could prove helpful. Um, uh, and, and monitor levels is always a big thing. Monitor, monitor, monitor levels is a real challenge in every performance aspect. So um, getting your monitor levels right um, can be also really helpful. Unfortunately, Matt, there are no, um, you know, big, um, what's the right word? There, there's no magic wand. I, I wish there was. And look, if there is. Um, would love to hear about in the chat and maybe someone in the community um, has some better ideas. Once again, uh, Kelly, thank you for paying it forward for Matt. Um, Super King, uh, another another person who generously gives to the channel on a regular basis. Thank you, Super King, for the Super Chat. Um, uh, Super King writes, can you train for a long time to make your singing sweet spot, your tessitura, higher? Seems I can after training daily for three years. Is this normal or an exception to the rule? Many uh, many song keys used to be too high now, often not high enough. Um, I think there's probably a number of things going on there, Super King. I I think given that you've been you know training your voice for three years, I would expect that it's more likely to be your developed efficiencies around the way you're using your voice and the toning of your voice. So, for example, um, if you were to start going to the gym and you started doing alignment work, 
And maybe you're doing that, let's say you're doing that with an exercise physiologist um, who, who is really working towards developing your alignment, your posture, but they're doing that through strength-based work. It could be that after a period of time, and it would be an extended period of time, that those around you would go, wow, it feels like you've grown a centimeter or two. And it's not that you've suddenly grown a centimeter or two. It's that your, your muscles that help you stand upright are toned in such a way as to, they, you know, instead of you, you know, if you were to be sitting in a chair, suddenly you are, the muscles are toned, they're maintaining a better, uh, a better um, agonistic, antagonistic relationship with each other. And as a result, you have a more upright stance and therefore you feel more upright and it almost looks like you've grown two centimeters where you haven't grown at all. It's just the toning of the muscles. I dare say, Super King, that that's probably what's happening for you vocally. Yes, you're building in more, um, more efficiencies into the way you're using your voice, but probably more to the point your muscles are toning in such a way as they feel like they that that sweet spot has moved. Now, I would be surprised to learn that 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 sweet spot, sweet spot, I should say, the tessitura, um, I often refer to as the prima voce. It's probably not moved all that much. I would think, you know, at the most, you know, a tone or two, um, and you just feeling like you can access higher areas of your voice more readily, which is fantastic. Uh, and that then comes through that developed muscle toning. If you were to, and I don't encourage you to do this, Super King, but if you were to then back off and stop doing all of that wonderful training, I suspect that the musculature would degrade, would atrophy. And, and as a result, your so-called sweet spot would slip back down again. That's that's what I would guesstimate suggest is is happening. Um, and so yeah, use it or lose it, Super King. I encourage you to keep using it, and uh, and I encourage you to to keep uh, keep offering the super chats, which I really appreciate. Uh, back up to pick up questions back. Uh, yes, I <laughs> thank you, Linda. That's where I'm going. Back to Dylan. Um, what is the most efficient way to maintain a singing voice if you are very busy? Oh, Dylan, I wish I had a, a simple answer to this. You know, it really harkens back to use it or lose it. You know, I, um, uh, I over the last couple of years with, with the advent of COVID and, and life and the whole range of things, I haven't been using my own voice in a performance singing kind of way for a couple of years. Uh, as many of you know, I had a professional performance career um, for, of about 25 years, give or take. And, um, and, uh, but in most recent times, I, I sing at my local church um, in leading songs. And, uh, but for the last couple of years, I haven't been doing that um, mostly because I've been developing Voice Essentials online courses. Um, but uh, in the next couple of months, I am re-entering and restarting to participate in that again. In anticipation of that participation, I am, and th that's, that is why I've got, well, let me come back up. That's why I've got all this gear set up here because after today's uh, live show, um, I am going to um, be on, uh, be jumping up and, and doing some practice and recording what have you for church. I'm starting to get the condition of my muscle. I want to get my, my vocal performance load conditioning back. And I know it's going to take me a number of weeks of regular, consistent work to do that. I started doing this a couple of weeks ago and I've got a couple of weeks to go. And so um, that recognizes that the voice does require regular, consistent use. 
And so when we're busy, Dylan, when we're busy, this, be this is hard. It's not easy. Um, and we're all at different, you know, different stages of life. We're all at, in different chapters of our, of our life. And, and, uh, and so it can be really challenging. Some of us have, you know, 60 hour jobs that, that, that have to be done. Some of us have families that we're, you know, we're giving our time to our families. Um, so finding the time can be, can be a challenge and I, and I, you know, don't want to suggest otherwise. The, the other thing too, though, that I would, that I would say, and, I, and this is more of a reflection on myself is that I find myself making the time for the things that in that particular chapter are important to me. And so, as I said, I, for the last couple of years, I, I, I had to shelve the importance of participating at church because I had other priorities, but now I'm starting to reprioritize my own singing. And in fact, I started off last year's show. I don't know if you remember, but I started off last year's show making this massive commitment to you all that I was going to be doing so much more singing and la la la. And I was getting back into my own voice. And do you know what? Nothing came of that. I <laughs> completely own it. I, I just, I, in the end, I just did not have the time to do it. And I didn't make the time to do it. And this year I went, this is the year. This is the year where I'm going to get back into it. So Dylan, I encourage you to, to just make that, that gracious self-assessment, you know, be, be gracious to yourself and, and have a look at what, what, you know, where, where is there some time to, to use the voice and develop the voice. Um, but it, it, look, it can be very difficult, um, when you are busy. I am so pleased to get to question five because we get to answer Kelly's question. Now, Kelly gave us a super chat earlier, but now we get to answer Kelly's question specifically. Okay. Here's something. This is, she's literally, this is what she's asked. This is what she's written. Okay. Here's something I've been thinking about. What's the best instrument to learn while also learning to sing? And how would you suggest approaching learning the two in tandem? I tried, but found it overwhelming. So I decided to focus on voice. I would now like to add an instrument. I'm just not sure how to add it in. Uh, you ask some great questions, Kelly. So my thought around this is think about where you might find yourself applying said instrument. Now, if Kelly, you were, um, much younger, <laughs> I hope that brought you a smile. If you were much younger, as in, in your primary school years, your junior, even as young as, you know, down in junior high and, and younger still, I would be encouraging you to learn pia uh, keyboard, piano. And, uh, and in practice, that's exactly what I've done um, with my children. Uh, and one of them uh, who has a, a, a piano uh, exam on Wednesday, uh, he's gone on uh, is, is playing wonderfully. Now, so the reason I, I encourage children to learn piano is because firstly, it's a harder instrument to build up competency on for playing songs than a guitar. The two instruments that are mostly given as in a response to a question like this, Kelly, are guitar and piano. If you're really young, Piano is, is definitely the way to go. It's also a great instrument for learning music. So developing your musicianship skills, your music theory skills, piano is excellent. And I think hands down the better choice specifically for when you are a young person, you know, and, and, you know, just like we have done with our kids, you know, you get that extrinsic benefit of your parent telling you, go and sit at the piano, go and do your piano practice. Now, 
the moment we get to adulthood, as Dylan has just very astutely pointed out, life gets busy. And having dedicated chunks of time over an extended period of time, years, to learn an instrument like piano to the point where it is going to become coherent and fluent and you're going to be able to apply your voice to that in a wonderfully cohesive way, that's a bit harder. And so I find that a lot of people really enjoy learning guitar as adult learners because it is an instrument that they can apply their vocal to much quicker in a fluent, coherent kind of way. And this is one of the reasons why we, we often see people start out on a ukulele uh, because, well, for, to start with, there are two less strings, but that doesn't make, mean, mean it's an easier instrument to, to, to master. But a lot of people find it a very accessible way to commence um, learning an instrument. So it all comes down to, you know, and, and then, so then, then it comes down to well, how, what, what are you wanting it for? Are you, uh, do you want to sit around a campfire and, and use your instrument? Well, a keyboard's probably not going to be suitable for that, um, simply from a transport point of view. So a guitar is going to be a better option. Um, and, and so you know, think about, well, where do you see yourself applying that instrument and with your voice? And these are all things that I can't, I can't categorically for you, Kelly, say you should do this, this, and this, because your circumstance, your reasons are yours and are all, you know, uh, definitely of, of high value. And so it's a matter of identifying, you know, a number of these things and then, but then once you make a decision on which instrument you're going to go with, apply yourself to that instrument. You know, be, be committed. And, and as you know, Kelly, with voice, with every other instrument you would ever learn, it is just going to take time and your consistent commitment to the process. And so whatever you decide to do, Kelly, I, I do wish you all the best and I uh, hope that goes well for you. Well, there you go. Um, I've just looked down at the time and realized we're out of time. That's that's the end of today's show. Um, and uh, thank you for really great questions today. We are going to do another live hangout, Q&A live hangout next week. Um, but then thereafter, we're going to have a, a guest. And remember I was mentioning Philippe Hall, um, and I went on his channel, um, his live show, uh, two weeks, uh, sorry, last week. Well, Philippe will be joining me on my channel, um, in two Mondays time, in a fortnight's time. And, uh, and so I'm looking forward to, to hosting, uh, Philippe and he's, he's great. He's got so much experience and he's passionate about voice. And, uh, I know you're going to be really inspired by the hangout that, we will do with Philippe. Uh, if you've enjoyed today's chat, hit the thumbs up button um, and, you know, subscribe, all those sort of, you know, things that we do. I very much look forward to seeing you next week. I hope you have a great week. Um, I'll be interested to find out who won the Super Bowl in the end. And I, I, let's not do any spoilers just in case people haven't seen it yet. I, I Well, I don't know who won. But um, uh, look, I hope you've uh, had a great weekend and I do look forward to seeing you again next week when we'll hang out again and you'll hear me say, I'm Dr. Dan, sing